I'm going to show you how to grind reputation with the Cobalt Assembly in World of Warcraft Dragonflight. Now, you could get this done in an hour. It could get done in a few hours. It depends on a few things. And I'm going to give you all the tips you need in order to go as fast as possible. Now, real quick before we do that, where are we? What does the vendor have? Why would we do this? Okay, so we are down here in the Azure span. We're up here in this part of the Azure span. This is where the Cobalt Assembly is. There's a bunch of elites here that we need to kill in order to get reputation. But it's a little more complicated than that. So reputation, Cobalt Assembly... Uh, it goes all the way up to uh, 6,400 for the final one. Or maybe it was 1,250 for one after that. But uh, And what you would get with that is you go over to this guy. And the main thing is you only need to get to the one I'm at right now, which was whatever I call it, whatever it was. It was, uh, was it high? Yeah, high. So four or five. Uh, and that only took me about about an hour. But I did. there was definitely some luck involved. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But the main reason you do this, there's two reasons. One is... You can get one of these three. I mean, you can get all three, but you can only equip one at a time. But you can get one of these three bands. My personal favorite is the Guardian's Ring because it gives a crazy amount of absorption from the shield. Although they did just nerf this, so in PvP, the shield, I think, is halved. But it's still pretty good. Uh, and in PvE, it's really good. Uh, but then there's other ones. Uh, healing spells have a chance to restore health on allies. And damaging spells and builds have a chance to deal additional damage. Also, the stats are all the same other than that. But the other reason you would want to do this is that there are patterns for certain professions. Specifically, tailoring, you can get the frozen spell thread, which will uh, boost your tailoring uh, beyond 75 or whatever, or 70, whatever it was, more easily. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but it's a way to grind a little bit higher up into tailoring. Uh, but there's also a, another tailoring one that's not so good for grinding necessarily. And then there's an alchemy recipe, there's a leatherworking recipe, and there's an inscription recipe. After that, there are cosmetics, but you'll have to get maximum uh, reputation with them in order to do the, buy these cosmetics. So you don't actually have to go to maximum. That's literally just for cosmetics only. Okay, so now the grind. Now, this is where things get complicated. I've got a few tricks for this, though. So uh, if you go over here, it's to the um, west of where we're at right here. So right up the staircase. There are these elite enemies up here. So let me just go ahead and fly up and look down at them. And the problem with this is going to be that, you know, PvP and stuff like that. So, the, and who else here? The best thing to do is if there's, say you're Horde and there's nothing but Alliance here and they're just farming this place. Then what you're going to want to do is try to change layers. You can do that by having random guildmates invite you to parties. You can do that by logging off for a few minutes and logging back in. Uh, it's very inconsistent trying to swap layers, but if you can get on another layer, that's good. You can almost tell sometimes if you just open the map and you'll see icons or people have bounties on their head and it's not always but if you do if you log in you see like icons or people with bounties on their head and it's all alliance or all horde then you can assume this place is under control by the horde or the whole layer is just you know sworn by horde or alliance or whatever but anyway once you get here the best way to get started is to do this with a group because these are elites and it's going to take you quite some time to get built up on your own and uh, what i mean by built up is that these guys will drop these random orbs that you can interact with that'll give you bonus like superpowers that last five minutes or you can get the option to refresh all those superpowers that you have for an additional five minutes which means you can keep them forever as long as you stay here grind uh but there's some that you're gonna want and there's some that you're not gonna want and if you're here with someone else you can leech off of them like when i came here this was talking, i got lucky there was some guy who'd been here for like 40 minutes and he was just one-shotting everything already and so I was able to just follow him around and feed off of him and grab orbs and just loot things. All I tried to do was just tag everything one time so I could get the credit for it while he killed them until I got built up as strong as he was. And to do that, the best way is to have your dragon, all your dragon uh, glyphs and be able to have max dragon skills. And if you need a video for that, check the description of this video. I have a video where all the dragon glyphs are and how to get them in like 90 minutes. So if you need that. But the main thing I would do to follow this guy is just uh, jump down and then use damage over time. So like Shadow Word Pain as a priest in specific. But whatever you can do to try to get him, if, if you're a melee only class, it's going to be a little bit harder. But anything you have this range, to try to tag everything before the guy kills him, if you're even in that scenario. Now, if you're not in that scenario, instead, you are going to have to kill a bunch of these things until you are like that. And again, it's much easier as a group. I highly recommend doing this as a group. There's no reason not to unless you just don't have anyone to do it with. Also, the orbs that drop, uh, anyone can grab them, and they'll actually just persist for, I don't know, about a minute or two. I think, I think like, one, I want to say one minute, maybe two, though. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, like, stealing them from someone else. It's shared. Everyone can interact with them once. Now, as for what powers to get, I usually avoid the growing large one and the shrinking one. It's just not worth the hassle. The main things that you're going to want, there's one that makes it so you move way faster, but you teleport back to random locations. Now, it's super annoying, but it's super worth it for this grind. Uh, other than that, you are going to want, 
just mastery, depending on your class. Now, in my case, I was a holy priest when I did it, and mastery only gave me healing, so I was kind of in a tough spot. Uh, if mastery does not increase your damage, then instead what you can get um, is the one where, there's one that basically puts lava on the floor when you're walking around. Now, you be careful because you can actually kill yourself with it, but... Uh, it will scale with your damage and mastery and all these things, and so then it'll make it start doing a lot of damage later on. As for that movement speed one I talked about, that teleports you back, you can only get, like, I think five stacks of it. But so go ahead and get those as soon as you can. Uh, other than that, there's maximum health, which you just want to keep getting. I think it's caps out at 25 stacks. But once you get enough stacks, then you don't have to worry about accidentally dying, because you'll be just tanky enough. And other than that, you just want to keep getting any stat bonuses you can, and you want to avoid uh, anything that's going to be too obnoxious. So, like... There's one that makes it so if you open your map and there's not a certain number of enemies around, then you die. You definitely don't want it. There's almost no benefit to it at all compared to just grinding normally. So don't grab that one. But most of it's pretty straightforward. So it's mainly about just even getting to that point and just, you know, picking up all the ones that increase stats, ones that do additional damage, ones where exploding sheep fall out of the sky, whatever, and just avoiding anything like the one that can kill you. Or there's also one that makes you have one HP but be invincible. That one can't be refreshed, which brings me to ones that can't be refreshed. So it's important to know that any purple ones, when you go to interact with these things, uh, any purple buffs that you see cannot be um, cannot be refreshed. So you see here, Arcane Bravery. Uh, this is the one I was talking about, Invincible for five minutes. But when you use Cobalt Catch-Up to refresh it, it does not refresh. So you don't even want to bother with that one. It's also important to know that there are some recipes, not recipes, but some buffs that don't stack at all. So uh, just be aware to not waste your time. You can always look up at your buffs as you're grabbing these things and then get, in the, get it again to see if you're at the max stacks for it or if it only stacks one time. Uh, for example, the one that increases the drop rate of the item that gives reputation, uh, that one, for example, can, you only get one of, just for whatever reason. So don't waste your you know orbs on that. Go ahead and get things that can keep stacking. But something to think about real fast, if you are lucky enough to get Arcane Bravery early on, you could definitely grab it. And then try to grab every single enemy you can and just AoE farm them before the five minutes is up. And if you can do enough damage, then that could help you get started really easily. Uh, not really easily, but get you a bunch of these orbs real fast, like five or six to get you started if you're trying to do this alone or just, you know, get started and no one's around who's already built up. But there is one more thing I want to talk about, which is the reputation. So um, the actual reputation gains are not direct. It's not every kill. It's that every kill has a chance of dropping an item that will give you the reputation. There's two items, one that gives, I want to say 15 rep and one that gives 30. Maybe it was 10 and 30 or 12 and 45. I, I don't really remember to be honest with you, but you get the point. It's not really gonna make that much of a difference because it's the only option you have. Knowing the exact number is not really super important. And one last thing you absolutely should know about is over here, there's an NPC again back at the little place, uh, this person, and they actually have this special little thing of um, Cobalt Assembly abilities. And these cost Dragon Isle supplies, but I highly, highly recommend getting as many as you can as fast as you can. I can't remember if they're rep blocked or not, but if they are, come and get them as soon as possible. Specifically, Cobalt Reputation, which makes you gain rep 30% faster, which will make you save you a ton of time in this grind. Uh, and this one's also really nice. Adds a fourth choice to your Wild Arcana abilities. Gives you four cards every time instead of three. Makes it easier to do that. Uh, and there's just a bunch of different buffs in here that can help you out. So definitely come and get those, even though they cost a lot of Dragon Supplies for a lot of them. Uh, because they definitely they just make life so much easier to get this grind done so much faster. All right, I think that pretty much covers everything, guys. So hopefully it helps you out. That's as far as I'm aware, everything I know about the Cobalt Assembly. If, if there's something else to them, I'm totally oblivious to it. This, as far as I'm aware, that's everything there is about it. It's not a super complicated thing as far as I'm aware, but those are all the tips and tricks I have to help you out, make your grind go faster, and just make everything easier for you with the Cobalt Assembly, Reputation Grind, in World of Warcraft, Dragonflight.